he things that I think I was hoping that as a parent, they're questions I might have. And also I've tried to answer a lot of your questions. So thank you for sending them in. And what I've tried to do is I'm trying to cover those with what I'm going to talk about. Um, so again, I'm just going to present. And if you have questions, as Simon said, will you please just put them in chat? And if there's an immediate one, I know Simon's going to interrupt me and go, Vanessa, can you answer this one? And I'll try my best. If not, I can try and answer questions at the end of the um, presentation. I can try and go through them. So. This is um, where the other one comes, and I, as I'm telling the students when I'm doing online learning, if I muck up when I'm presenting, can someone shout and say, Vanessa, you're not presenting what you said you were going to be presenting? So my kids are very good at that. So here goes in the new world, present now. I'm going to try my best, and here we go. And I am hoping at that point, and you are then going to see a whole presentation, except I'm at the end of it, so I'm going to go back to the beginning of it. See, I was practicing it before I came on, you see. So, yeah. that's up okay? on the screen. Perfect. Well done. Perfect. Thank you. Feel better now. Awesome. So, firstly, I'd like to say welcome to the UTC. All right. It was a lovely day today in that we had racing cars back on the circuit. We always love that noise when we're in the building. So, let me start. Um, I, we were asked the question, will we be opening in September? My crystal ball's not doing overly well, okay? But the assumption at the moment is that we will be, we will be opening as normal in September. Please note my health warning. Nothing has been confirmed yet. And although that is our first assumption, we have reserves in place. I'd also like to mention at this point, there was a question that came up about um, students who've missed work. Um, I think this is where we have an advantage. Our key stage four is two years. So we will be covering everything in the two years. So students who have missed work in year nine, it is not an issue. They will be covering it again. So please don't worry about work that has been missed. They are going to cover it again because we cover everything in two years. Now, one of the first questions I always get asked is about dress code. Um, first of all, our dress code is business wear. It is smart business wear. So I put, I just went Googled, I Googled smart business wear and there was, I think, the first image that came. It is not just school uniform, all right? It is business wear. So when students ask, they ask so many questions. Is this acceptable? Is that acceptable? Well, the question is really, if you were going into McLaren and you were going, or you were going into um, Chewy, or let's, you know, you were going to a business environment where the work wear, the, the dress code was smart business wear, would you wear it? So things like cardigans, bomber jackets, sweatshirts can never be classed as business jackets or business wear. Um, now, the next one is skirt length. Right, so here's my little rule of thumb. If the skirt is so short that it will be distracting, then it's not appropriate business wear. Um, key thing there. Needs, you know, it, 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 a business wear is where Either sex is not distracted by them and by their clothing. So it's just thinking about that. And this is another interesting one. There's a pair of, um, it's actually described as a pair of school shoes. I certainly don't describe that as a pair of sh school shoes. And I certainly wouldn't work, walk into a posh office wearing those. They look like a pair of Converse or trainers for, to me. And remember, I'm a little bit older here. So if a pair of shoes looks like trainers, pumps, Converse, any of those things, then they're not appropriate business wear. Um, and students say, but I got it from the school section. No, I'm sorry. It's got to be appropriate for business wear. And actually, the students have got a choice here to choose clothing that they like, suits that they like. Boys can choose shirts that they like, ties they like. Um, in previous years, a lot of the boys chose to wear bow ties on Friday. It was absolutely lovely. One of them um, made a wooden bow tie 
awesome, looked amazing, waistcoats. You know, we've had quite a lot of fashion going on within business wear. Shoes, you know, I say shoes should be appropriate. And, I, and in the handbook, it talks about, you know, not wearing shoes that are too high. We're in one building though, and actually why can't the students enjoy wearing shoes and choosing their shoes? Um, so I certainly do, and I, I'm wearing business wear. So I think it is important that they can. Please be note, note, if they are too high and they can't, girls or boys, if they're too high and they can't walk on them, not much sympathy will be provided. Um, I'm gonna mention skinny trousers here, and I'm going to comment that the boys do like playing football, okay, outside. I'd probably say it's about once every three weeks we get one of the boys coming to reception kind of with a coat or something draped around them going, yes, I've split my trousers playing football. So if they're too tight, they tend to split more. Girls, we know there's a fine line between tight and what is acceptable in the work environment. So just think a little bit about that. I mentioned a few other things here. Um, students say to me, hair color. Okay, what colors am I allowed? Well, it needs your hair and the actual style you have needs to look professional. And that's the overriding thing. Okay, so it must look professional. Makeup needs to be professional. Ear pi piercings, discreet. Um, Students will need a bag to carry their equipment around. Um, coats are not needed in our building. And the building has an amazing building management system. The rooms are generally within one or two degrees of each other. Um, so the, the building stays a pretty constant temperature. Today, I have to admit, it was absolutely lovely. Um, we did have a few students in today, um, some of the year 10s, and it was lovely and cool in the building. It was quite a shock when we went out. Um, coats, of course, may be need when they're traveling. I'll mention hoodies are never business wear and lanyards, as you know, my husband wears for work and the staff wear, lanyards are not optional. So every student has their lanyard. Okay, moving forward. Um, we're asked regularly about which laptop is best. Um, there's no specific answer on this one. I'll mention that business and events students, the majority of their work is, is Excel or Word based. So any laptop with internet access will work well. Um, our note at the bottom, Apple Macs can sometimes struggle to link with our system for printing. Um, I've, got, I've got a lot of students that do use Apple Macs, but it can sometimes struggle. Um, Engineering, slightly different, but there is nothing that will say this is the perfect thing. Right, the engineers um, later on in year 10 will need to do CAD. So in one of their units, R107, the design, it's where they're actually designing a valley brace. They will learn how to use Solid Edge. It's Siemens software. Um, it's and it's free to download. So the student version can be downloaded for free at any point in time. But Solid Edge is graphics and RAM heavy. Now, of course, you know, if you go on to the Siemens website, there is advice um, and there is a link um, in the student handbook that I hope you've either got today or you'll get tomorrow morning, which um, say, takes you to that website um, and you can find their advice. Of course, machines with a lower spec will work, but they might be slightly slower. So there's no specific model, no specific make. Macs really, really struggle or have done with the Siemens software, with the solid edge. So I certainly wouldn't say that, although there is now, I think if I'm, I'm right, and uh, the solid edge version that is working on Macs. But I would say, please just get a basic laptop, one that has enough RAM to cope with Solid Edge. And please don't get one, think you've got to get one that sings, dances and makes a cup of tea, as I say. You don't have to. 
And certainly when my son came to the UTC, he got the base model that was going to survive and do the solid edge that he needed to do for his course. Um, he certainly didn't get the top of the range model because I knew it was coming in and out the building all the time. It's still going now. It's still going now. My husband's using it now. General equipment. I'm going to put a note at the bottom with COVID-19 sharing equipment is really now a no. So it is absolutely essential that the students come organised for work. You know, let's be brutally honest. They are coming to the UTC to say, I'm, I want to get ready for the world of work. Well, when we go to work, we have to be right, correctly equipped, ready to do our job. And that's what we're expecting for them. So it is basic equipment. And I've put some examples on here of what they actually need in their pencil case every day that they can use. Okay. But in addition to that, there are now some things that we really cannot loan out that we were doing. So um, we've added or we are adding to our PE supplier a basic lab coat. Now the lab coat is used for science and engineering. It's not compulsory in science. Um, we tend to say, we used to say our students wore it because they often were in suits and they didn't want anything on their suits. But it isn't compulsory in science. But I certainly wouldn't want my son, and I didn't want him, working in the uh, workshops without something covering his suit. So there's a basic lab coat there, um, which you can get. Uh, overalls are fine as well. So if someone's got overalls that they already use, they're absolutely fine. Um, safety glasses, every student will need some safety glasses. Again, they will need them in science and they definitely need them in engineering. And our engineers will need steel toe cap shoes or boots. There are an absolute variety here. So for our female engineers, I know there's some that have managed to find pink steel toe cap boots, which are wonderful. I have actually have a pair of steel toe cap shoes. Um, they look like court shoes. They look like a pair of normal shoes. Um, absolutely fantastic to wear. So there are a huge variety. But I will say, even though the, the students are coming in in year 10, please make sure everything's labelled. It's absolutely key that it is labelled. Um, absence. I'm going to draw your attention to the research because we know, um, especially when we're looking at Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5, and it, uh, the research shows that when attendance drops below 90%, it impacts exam results. Um, that 10% drop in teaching time reduced um, grades or reduces grades by one grade on average. So attendance really, really matters. And if there are, we know that students are not well 100% of the time. Um, so please tell us, um, either phone in or use the absence line if there are any problems um, and your son or daughter isn't coming in and they're not very well. Now, if somebody, if a student um, becomes ill during the day, what we ask and what we say to the students is, please, can you go to Sonia on reception? Now, Sonia will contact parents if needed. Key stage four is a time when we are trying to get the students ready for the world of work. And we know that in the world of work, there are times when we may not feel 100%, but actually we've got to try and complete the day. Sonia on reception is fantastic. She knows every student in the UTC by name. She knows them very, very well. And one of the first things we ask is, can you cope with the day? Have a drink, some fresh air, can you cope? Because we do want them to try and get into the habit of coping like they would in, in the world of work. But if they are really, really ill, we'll be in contact with you quickly. And please be aware, the Silverstone Circuit has their own medical centre with their own paramedics on site. So we do have access within 90 seconds to paramedics. Um, just if anyone's worried, I think we are the safest place where that's concerned. One thing I will say is we really, really do not want students just phoning you. Um, because we don't know what's going on. We need them to go and coordinate with Sonia. Now, I get asked about homework. We do have a longer day. 
And we do not set regular homework, but we do expect students to complete their work. And I've added in brackets, when focused in class, completing work is generally not an issue. Because it's generally we are managing to get it completed within the classroom environment. So if students are completing work, then it's a, it might be that that piece of work hasn't been completed in class, or it might be the odd occasion where there's a bit of pre-work required or a bit of follow-up required, work required, but we try not to do it too much. However, and if you've got your sons or daughters there, you can actually, um, they can see this and I'll say exactly with them, revision must take place outside the building as well as in lessons when we get closer to exams. We cannot fit revision in as well. Testing. So when your sons and daughters arrive, they will sit baseline tests. You cannot revise for them. And what we use is we use these to set our targets. Now, as students progress, these targets can go up and sometimes do. Um, students find sometimes find that they settle in really well at the UTC. They start progressing better and therefore they're achieving more than kind of was initially expected than their baseline test said because they've settled in so well. Um, so the baselines will go, could go up, they certainly won't go down. Um, in terms of testing, subjects regularly set assessments and tests throughout the year. And then there are formal end of year exams for year 10, they take place um, the moment that the year 11 and 12 and 13 exams are finished, we leave the main exam hall set up for year 10 and we have formal year 10 exams. What we try at that time is to make that as real as we can so that actually students get the feel of exams so that they are not as stressed when they go into the year 11 mocks and even less stressed when they do the real things because they know exactly they know the routine they know what happens and yes it is almost the normal um so that's what we have there right information for parents so you will get pit stop reports. Now, these um, give you a snapshot of how your son or daughter is progressing and give details of what they need to do to improve um, three times a year. There's a parents' evening where you've got time to talk to individual teachers. You will find throughout the year there are information sessions. Information sessions, it could be on online safety, it could be on applying for apprenticeships, it could be I do things, we do things for UCAS, we... Um, We'll do all about revision. We'll do about um, dealing with stress during the exam periods. We, you know, so there's a huge range of things that we will do throughout the year. Oh, of course, looking for um, uh, work experience. You'll also find that the first thing you'll have is the form tutor evening. And that evening is for you to come and talk to the form tutor to see how your son or daughter has settled in. That we're looking at the calendar at the moment and I predict it was something like the third week in will be that evening. And of course, there will be a calendar for you so you can see all of these coming up. Now, I was asked on the questions, can you show me what the pit stop report looks like? So here's an anonymized one. So the first thing you get is you get um, a summary of attendance. OK, you get behavior points and achievement points. So in other words, OK, negatives and of course, positives. Then you've got the subjects and the first column there or second column is behaviors for business. Um, so there we're looking. Uh, one is high, five is low. And we're looking at the skills our students need to be successful in the world of work, including independence, completion of work, checking when they're unsure about some, something. So it's not just about the level of effort. It's all how, well, how prepared are they for their lessons? You know, do they focus and get things completed? You've got they're currently working towards grade. Um, we, you know, in many subjects, you don't expect if your target is an eight, um, you're not going to be working at a grade eight the moment you start your GCSE course. Um, 
you're going to be working towards something and then you can see how far you are off um, your target. Your teachers will see your, um, your trajectory, your rate of progress, and will put a predicted grade in. And you might notice for some of the, these that actually the predicted is above um, the actual target grade. Um, so really, the target, if, that's, if that continues, the target needs to go up. Um, so that's what the first page or the first part of it looks like. Then this is what you get from the teachers. So M um, is actually one of my engineering students, passionate engineer, particular attention to what he does. And I'm, I'm saying straight away is what are the real strengths? And then what's the key thing this individual needs to do to improve? And I've put word economy here. Um, so in other words, choose, has a, this young man has a, an extensive knowledge and needs to pick the key things that are going to be relevant to this question. Okay, so being a little more selective because actually he's got a very, very strong engineering knowledge. And you'll find some similarities, his English. Okay, so English, the first part of this is telling you what the young man does well. All right, so there you've got that. And the second part gives you clear details of what the young man needs to do to actually improve his answers, his grade, his overall outcome. All right, and there you've got, must look at more references and more about justifying his explanations. Okay, so in other words, there's a, there is a bit of a similarity between the engineering and the English. And that's the thing you will get for all the subjects. In other words, what they're doing well and a key thing they need to do to improve. Um, as a parent, okay, um, some of you, your children are coming quite a distance to us. If you have any questions, got any concerns, you've got any worries, please talk to us. And I always suggest emailing the form tutor as the first port of call. Um, but you know, there is, all, you will get details and we've got names for student services. You will um, probably talk to, very much to Sonia on reception if you phone in and I know that she will pass any messages on. Um, so, and you know, there's always, your the subject teachers um, so please email them if it's a direct subject question you have and um, please be aware some of us have got some very very busy days so we will aim to get back to you as soon as possible hopefully within 24 48 hours but if it is um, and and blame the timetabler myself you know i do have some members of staff who've got horrendous three horrendous days and some quieter days so but hopefully your, your email will hit just before they've got some time to reply to you. Now, most important for the students, food. Firstly, um, I love our building. It's a great building, but it wasn't designed to allow everyone to have access to the canteen at the same time. So we have staggered lunch times and staggered breaks. Um, students do have plenty of time to eat their hot food from the canteen, or of course they can bring their own packed food. And it is a real mix. Some students bring packed food and a little bit of money. Um, they, they buy a drink. Um, so it really does vary. We use parent pay and we have um, biometrics, so students do not need to bring cash into the building. They will need the cash for the first few days until we've got their finger set up on the biometrics and then they won't need cash. Um, what I do like is the um, there is a great rapport between the canteen um, and the students. The canteen are proud of what they offer and actually do want to know what the students want to eat. They listen to them and the response from the students is really quite positive. Fishy Friday, very, very busy on Fishy Friday. But the roast dinners, when he does roast dinners, they are extremely popular as well. His tacos. So th there are some um, really, really popular dishes that are done. A lot of stuff in eating the canteen as well. The food, I would say, is reasonably priced. 
Okay, and we will aim to get some menus out from Harrison's and publish them so you can see them. Um, at the moment, I haven't, um, the Harrison's are not back in the building, so I'm not able to do it at the moment. So apologies for that. So it could be either a hot food from the canteen, it can be packed food. Students can also buy tea, coffee and hot chocolate. Um, they love that absolutely love it the hot chocolate with their whipped cream is a particular um, favorite of them we ask students to drink those downstairs um, not to take them up so um, so we do ask that that they get it the start of their lunch or break rather than right at the end now there's a question about lockers um, there are some lockers we do not have enough for every student um, the lo uh, lockers are allocated by Sonia on reception um, and there's a five pound returnable deposit. They are allocated on a first come first served basis. Um, I'll say now many form rooms also have coat hooks and students, quite a lot of students are starting to choose to leave their coats in their form rooms. They don't leave valuables in there, they keep those with them. But the students do seem to choose to carry their stuff with them. Um, there also seems to be a routine when it comes to the safety boots and all that kind of thing that a lot of students share a locker. Um, so if one's got a locker, they all put their stuff in and have a, um, a padlock that's got a code that they all know. So uh, there are a variety of ways of doing that, but that's the kind of the system we have. Um, options. I've been asked, there was a question about... Ooh, sorry, Vanessa, so, yeah. just, just, so just whilst you're on um, kit, one of the questions was about um, where parents and students tend to get PE kit from. Um, so, right. Um, so there is a link in the student handbook. Um, I don't know whether that came out today or is coming out tomorrow, but there is a link in that. And when you're doing some talking, I'll try and get the link out and show people the page for that before they disappear. Um, so there is that, um, if that makes sense. But in the, in the handbook, in the student handbook, it also talks about um, PE colours. So we don't stipulate they've got to have certain pieces of PE clothing, but we, they could just be plain colours, um, our colours, and the, the you know jogging bottoms and a top and trainers um, and to be honest lab coats and safety specs they can come from absolutely anywhere as well same same with safety boots but I will get the link when you're doing some talking Simon if that's so all right that that's I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem it sounds like um, a few of the handbooks have come through oh um, right good so I suppose at this point it'd be useful for me to say if you don't manage, if you don't receive the handbook, then please feel free to get in contact with us. Um, I'll say that at the end as well, um, so that we can get that out to you, so that all of the information is there and available for you. But, um, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Vanessa. Sorry for interrupting. No, no, no. Absolutely, absolutely. I know someone's there listening to me. It's fantastic. Very good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> right. Options. So, in terms of options, when you apply to come to the UTC, you completed a form and put options on there. I have to say that's what we're working with. In other words, what was requested on the application form, and that's what we're working to provide. I think there was a those who talked about SPDM. I, I'm. Uh, if I'm correct, there's a letter gone out to say that that is um, now not offered by the exam board. So we have moved to BTEC Art and Design. However, as you would expect with us, the main focus is on design, not on art. Um, and the first project the students, um, the current year 10s are doing is the current year 10s have done a, are doing a project with the Experience Centre. Um, so that they've been over to the Experience Centre that was introduced by um, um, the lead there and they're working on that um, and I believe information is coming out for the BTEC PE um, students asking them to, to provide details of the club or clubs and sports they participate in outside the UTC those students doing BTEC PE they have to provide ex, um, a portfolio and with that portfolio it has to link with the sports they do we have 
we don't have massive amount of sporting facilities at the UTC. We're very pleased that our link with Stowe means that we do go over, the BTEC P students do go over and use Stowe's facilities, which our students love. Um, but we ask to get the highest grades in BTEC PE, the students need um, experience and to be able to talk about uh, other sports that they do outside so just to say um, I know um, that's been requested if that could come in please any questions about options please can you and me email admissions and the admissions team then liaise with myself and Jenny Andrew Arthur about the timetable um, there was a question about when timetables will be given out we are working on a lot of things at the moment um, we do not normally give out timetables um, to the new year tens until they come in on day one um, but if there are questions about it then please email admissions um, I will um, try and we did last year get um, confirm with people the options that we would put them in and we will work to do that again so just be aware that will come out and we'll ask for that to be confirmed Vanessa, what about if um, if students wanted to change options? You may just be going on to this. Um, is, is there an opportunity for, for students to change options? Right. So people need to email us pretty quickly. Um, we do we do um, run on a first come on, on those who've been on um, accepted the position. Oh gosh, almost a year ago. Um, so from the first cohort. They are our kind of first priority, so they they take priority on their kind of options working through. We can sometimes do some changes, but we are very, very, very tight. So if someone um, has a complete change, then admissions need to know ASAP, please. And we can try and deal with it, but we are very, very tight at the moment. OK, it's a full it's a full year group. Does that, does that make sense, Simon? Does yeah, that no, that's perfect, thank you. Yeah, that's perfect. great. Okay. Um, so I'm delighted to say we have our own dedicated and independent careers lead, that's Mrs. Helen Jones. Um, she works with all students, so she works with individuals, she works with tutor groups, she coordinates work experience, and it was so, so tragic that COVID has stopped work experience this year. Um, we, you know, please start having a look for next year about uh, inquiring whether you've got friends in um, engineering companies or events companies or whatever you're interested in that might be able to offer work experience. The sooner you kind of um, get that organized, if you can, the better. There is always a book of potential employers, but it, they don't tend to include F1. Um, and some of the big engineering companies. So please have a look and see if you can organize my friends, relatives, um, your next door neighbor. I know when my son was doing work experience, I, um, I sweet talked, well, actually I made him sweet talk the next door neighbor so that he could go up to Sywell Aerodrome and work there. So um, please start thinking about it now. Um, it is much easier and this, if, if it's come via the students inquiring themselves, the employer then sees them as more independent and is more likely to give them greater opportunity than if it's been organised by um, the school or by the school. Okay, so please have a look now. Um, I'll note I'll note here that um, Mrs. Jones is available to meet with students with their parents. So she, you know, she can be booked um, and does take bookings to talk about careers on a kind of one-to-one -one basis. So please be aware she is there and is a resource for everyone. Um, there are quite a lot of questions about transport, and I I have taken this picture and I'll, I'll share a different screen in a moment. So we have four stagecoach um, services that come into our building for the nine o'clock start and come at five o'clock to collect students. That's the 84, the 
and I've got them going to be like 88, the 82, and the 83. Um, those services are stagecoach run, and um, they're not booked via us. Um, they are paid for, and it's all through stagecoach. There are three of our own services, the 2001, 2002, and 2004. Um, those, and this is where I try, I'm going to change, I'm going to share this tab. I'm hoping, Simon confirmed, the screen has changed. And yeah, I'm yeah, on yeah, right. our okay. website, Student Transport. Okay, so there's the image you've just seen. And services, there's a few more on those, there isn't. 2006 is gone, okay. Uh, can only be booked from here. There is a link. It gives you details on here. Here's a public bus. This is the 88, and it tells you where it stops, and it tells you the times that it stops in the morning and the times it returns in the evening. If we go, there is, I could, there's the 88, there's the 82, and there's the 83. Now, if I scroll down here, here's our contract services, the 2001 and it tells you exactly where it goes and it tells you the time there and the return time. It also shows the costs. So that is what we've got here. It is all on our website and there is a booking form. If you are interested in these services, then you do need to book because the, um, the company, the coach company, um, only provide the size of coach for the numbers of students. Okay, that we have. There are no, there are generally no spare spaces on it. So please, please, please contact us and book. Right, I'm going to go back to that. Um, so that's our transport. It's all on our website. And again, if there are major issues, contact admissions. And I know that admissions will sort out to get back to you or guide you to the right location to see. Um, first day. What will the first day be like? Let's. I'm making the assumption that we're coming back into the building. All right. So, students come in and they start with a form tutor. We we meet them all, and we normally start them all in in the lecture theatre or in the canteen area downstairs. And at that point, we then allocate them to their tutor groups. Once in the tutor groups we have this get to know you activities. We, uh, at last count, we have students coming in from almost 80 different feeder schools. With that, students who, you, you know, you may, student, your, your son or daughter may be coming in and actually they already know a few other people who are coming. But there's a lot of students who may not. So we do try our best to mix absolutely everybody up because there's so many people who don't know anybody. What we don't want to do is we don't want to keep necessarily groups together. We want to try and mix people up as much as possible. And I suppose behind the scenes, we're thinking, right, when students move on to the world of work, they're not going to move to the world of work with their friends. They're likely to move on their own. So we need to help them to gain the skills for that transition. So, you know, the if you have got questions, i.e. there's someone you're desperate to be with, I might ask why, okay, because they're probably going to find them in lessons because we've got different groupings for different subjects and different groupings for options. So the number of different groupings are huge, okay. So I would actually encourage that we mix the students up as much as possible so that students get to know a lot of new people just as they would when they go into the world of work. So what else do they do? They've got to get to know your activities in their form group. We'll show them how, where the fire drill is, what, what they do. Okay, so and we'll show them around the building. They normally have a walk around with their form tutor because um, all the questions and quite rightly, where are the toilets? You know, those kind of things. So a good walk around the building helps the students to feel at home. 
um, go through what the day looks like, what a normal day looks like. Um, of course, access to email, Wi-Fi, all of those important things because connectivity is vital in our building. Um, and go through the basic procedures, you know, what happens if you're feeling ill, you know, what do you do? Introduce everybody to Sonia on reception so she can start learning the names because she's very, very proud that it's normally within two weeks she knows everybody. Um, of course, introduce the students to who does what and where to find people because it's often, you know, where do you find these things and these people if you've got a question? But we also try to get students into lessons as soon as possible to get them going with their work um, and get them into that work routine. Um, and that, I do believe, is the end of my presentation. So I hope that has answered quite a lot of questions. So if that's all right, Simon, um, I'm going to stop presenting at this point. So I'm stopping and I'm going back this way. Oh, there's more faces. Fantastic. I can see people. That's lovely. Um, so, um, Simon, there. are there any questions that have come up that I need to go through, that, um, et cetera? I, I, uh, there are loads of questions. A few of them oh. I've answered probably not quite as well as you would be able to. So I've, there are a few that I've kind of deferred to you, unfortunately. Oh, have you? Right. Do you want um, to, yeah, that's fine. Well, there, there's a nice easy one um, that I, I don't from, um, from Penny who asked about um, parents getting onto the site um, in the morning. Do they need a parking permit? Right. Yes, absolutely. Um, so every student, um, all the parents will be given a um, an access, um, a UTC access form. It's valid for the academic year. And yes, you will need to show that. And at the moment, parents coming, everybody coming in is temperature tested. Um, whether that'll happen in September, I don't know. But yes, you will get that so that you can get on and off site. It doesn't get you in at weekends and it doesn't get you into the Grand Prix or MotoGP or any of the events, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there are a couple of other uh, timetable uh, time ones and kind of curriculum ones. Um, a couple of people have asked about a bit of clarification about what SPDM is. So that was in the initial um, information that went out. Um, smart product design and manufacture was what SPDM was and that it went out initially. Then um, it was about December um, that the exam board said that, so any students almost prior to somewhere around there, the exam board started to say, we're not going to offer this course for next year. And as soon as we um, kind of transitioned to the next one, then some information went out to all parents to say, sorry, if you had opted for this, it's not SPDM anymore. It is art and design. But the focus is not on art, it is on the design aspect, which is very, very similar to the SPDM that we were offering. Okay. And it, um, is, does, it does seem to be quite, it, the SPDM, so Smart Product Design and Manufacture, was very popular, um, and the art and design is very oh, too popular at the moment. It looks like that, that um, hits the nail on the head. Um, okay. So there, there are a few questions about when um, students and parents would be able to find out when uh, which form groups they'll be in. Um, right. So in terms of that, um, we are a little more challenged on that because we students do not officially become on roll uh, get on roll until they actually arrive with us. So there are provisional tutor groups. And I will see this year because normally they've found out um, a bit more when we've had transition days. And that's a really good point. So what I will talk to is I will talk to um, student services and to our timetable, our main timetabler, and see if we can get that information out. OK, so that's a really good point because it's just reminded me that we normally um, do that on transition days, which unfortunately won't be happening. Yeah. So I will, I will, I, I need to note that down so I don't yeah. forget that we yeah, need to do that. that. Um, so there are a couple of, I think I can probably, um, so uh, one of the questions or a couple of the questions that came through on the survey um, before were about um, us doing, so this is a little bit about transition, um, mm. about us doing a video. Um, so my plan over the next few days is to is to record a walk around the <laughs> school and then I'll um, I'll explain where everything is and what everything looks like um, so that you get a little bit of a, of a 
I know it's, it doesn't replace being in there live, but you'll be able to see what the school looks like, um, although it'll be absolutely empty, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so you won't get a real taste until the, until the first day, I'm afraid. Um, so, uh, and if there, there are a couple of questions coming through, I think some of them are alluding to kind of personal circumstances around travel. Um, mm -hmm. So if there, if, if, if there aren't, if, if the information that we've provided about travel doesn't answer your question at this point, please feel free to get in contact with us and we'll try and we'll try and answer your questions as well as you possibly can, as well mm -hmm. as we possibly can, um, because I'm sure that there are options um, if, if you're struggling to find them or if the information doesn't quite make it clear for you. Right, there are five, uh, I've seen a question, there are five forms in year 10. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've just seen that one. <laughs> a, a couple more about lockers. So one of them is about um, when are they, when, when are students and parents able to pay for lockers? And then the other one is about, um, so given that we've got COVID, uh, that, that there's mm. um, students bringing more kit in, are, are we providing more lockers? Um, so mm -hmm. I yeah, in terms yeah. of lockers, there's very, very limited space for it. Um, um we've i'm trying to think how many we were provided with it is not that many um in terms of uh, the way we normally do it which is uh, with sonia on the first day so we don't expect anything before um i will check that one can we note that one down again please and i will yeah. check that one as to and get information about that because again i suppose we do, we normally talk about it on transition day yeah in terms of amount of equipment, uh, the students talked about being able to leave equipment in their form rooms and we looked at trying to provide coat hooks and things in all the form rooms. Um, I, would, I will stipulate here, please make sure everything is fully labelled. It amazes me how students can lose, lose one shoe. Um, every so often, Sonia um, has a lost property table and she emails home to tell all parents as well. So you're very welcome to come and have a look. But it, it's got one shoe on it. So have we had a student hopping on the way home? You know, it always amazes me uh, that they can lose one shoe. So please make sure everything is thoroughly, thoroughly labelled. Um, we are in one building and if things tend to are left in one place, actually they, they nearly always appear back with Sonia. I will say we've got these, what are, they, what are they, AirPods appearing, these these um, ear things, see, I'm showing my age, they, they don't have wires with them. Um, I, I don't encourage those at all because there's no markings on them. Um, so, you know, the, the problem with that is they all look alike. Um, so I really wouldn't encourage those. And we do say um, that mobile phones, Bluetooth, smart devices should be off in classrooms. But we embrace technology. So there will be times when staff will say to the students, get your phones out, we're doing this, which is perfectly acceptable, you know, and working on laptops. But they should support the world of work, not distract the world of work. Um, and certainly, if students have got these Bluetooth um, ear things in, all right, and their phone's on, they constantly get buzzing in their ear as a text here or whatever. So actually, that's, that's a no-no. That's why phones need to be off and not distracting. Okay, um, we're still getting a few questions coming in, which is great. Thank you very much. And again, it's um, no, nothing is nothing is too small. So please don't feel like you're being a bother at all. It's, it's mm -hmm. really good. Um, yeah. And also, please remember that if you forget something, then we're doing a couple of information evenings over the uh, over the next few weeks as well. Um, yeah. You're more than welcome to come and talk to us again um, on the second of July and the seventh of July as well. And if there's anything that you feel that we've missed, but you you would like to get in contact with us, but you don't want to, to sit on a video chat, feel mm. free to send us an email. Again, we're really aware that changing school can be quite a, can be a really big deal for a lot of mm. people, for parents mm. as well. So please don't feel like it's any bother at all to ask us any questions. Mm. Um, so there are a few about PE. Um, so the ones about PE. Um, so uh, firstly, how how often do they do PE? So um, PE, as in the um, uh, pre-required one, so everyone does yeah. it, is once a fortnight. Okay. So and it's two hours um, every fortnight. And uh, come, come rain or shine. Going to mention that, come rain or shine. 
if it is snowing or absolutely and utterly tipping it down, then um, the only place we have indoors is the lecture theatre. So there is sometimes an opportunity to go in there. BTEC PE, um, a lot more because the students also have three to hour lessons every fortnight. So depending on what they're doing and what part of the BTEC PE course they're in, they um, will, will be doing more practical work with that. Um, with the BTEC, one of the questions is about BTEC PE and it talks about mm -hmm. being a member of a club to, uh, or, or, a, or a sport. Do you, yeah. Do you, Sorry, I've, I've muddled my words. Yeah, do, oh, do students need to be a member of a club whilst they're doing that? Um, so, um, in order to achieve the highest grades in BTEC PE, right, we don't have extensive sporting facilities to enable students to talk in depth about different sports. So, what we state for any student opting to do BTEC PE is that they need to be part or they need to do sport outside school because they can then draw on that expertise when they're completing their coursework. Without that knowledge, they are going to struggle. They're not going to be able to access the, the, the grades. And they don't have the experience. And that's purely because, I'm sorry, the building was not built with extensive um, sporting facilities. Um, we just don't have it. Um, and as I say, we don't have a sports hall. It, we, our amount of sporting, the sporting facilities have improved because we can go and use Stowe sporting facilities, which is really good. We do have sports teams. And the thing that uh, we are pride ourselves on, and uh, Mr. Fitzhugh and Mr. Smith pride themselves on, is the sporting conduct. Always get commented on the teamwork that our students um, display which is utterly fantastic. Not sure we're always winning, okay? They haven't been brought up together for a long time. Um, but we, we go and play Stowe, we'll go and play different schools. So there are sporting fixtures that take place. Um, when students do that, it's just like anyone else. If you're out of work doing something and meeting, you've still got to catch up on your work. So that's key as well. Um, do, do, do you know when students will find out whether they've been accepted onto the tech sport? Um, so in other words, that one I don't know at the moment. Can I get back to those people on that? I haven't, I'm not leading this year on sorting out the options. Mrs. Andrew Arthur is. And I know that um, there's been some questions going out to those people who opted for PE to provide information about what sport, extra sports they do. Um, and somebody's asked about um, running around the track, um, which would be a lovely <laughs> idea. Um, there is an opportunity to do a half marathon occasionally. Um, <laughs> you're more than welcome to participate in that. Um, unfortunately, we don't always have access to the track side, I'm afraid. No, we don't. Um, we very rarely get that. We, yeah. re we really, it is very rare when we get that. We certainly get that for Children in Need Day when we have a fantastic, it is an app, it's an absolute key for all of us. Students coming in fancy dress on uh, Children in Need. We all go to the circuit. We all get sponsorship and we all walk or run round the circuit. Um, it's an awesome, awesome day. It really is one of the best. Um, and we've raised huge amounts of money for charity. Um, and I'm gonna say quite clearly now, Students come from many different schools, as you know, I've said about 80 different feeder schools. And when we start talking about children in need, there's these faces going, they don't, people don't really dress up, do they? Yes, they do. <laughs> Staff do, Stu everybody yeah. does. Um, you know, the Jamaican bobsleigh team where the kids made their bobsleigh and they were all dressed up. You know, Disney characters, that's the boys being the Disney characters, the cones. So getting these huge costume cones and then they'd walk around the circuit and, and just stand there. Um, uh, you know, with bananas. Um, I'm trying, um, oh, gosh, I could keep going. So. The themes are key, so yes, it's joining in as you would in work. In many businesses, have their their charity links, and we're certainly hearing about a lot of them at the moment, linked to COVID nineteen, and that's what we say in work. Workplaces have a charity link, and people join in, and that's what we do at the UTC. So, 
Where did I get yeah. that? I've lost myself. I started somewhere. Well, we, I ended somewhere else. We, but never mind. We, there was a question about running around, uh, running around the track yes. perimeter. To, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, we don't have access apart from um, bits and pieces. Although, what students? Um, so, for example, media. We've negotiated time at places around the circuit so they can do videoing for media. Um, experience centre. There's a strong link with the experience centre, and uh, we've had enrichment groups going there. As I say, art and design using the experience centre. So using the facilities and the the input from there. In terms of our running track, our kind of 100 metres, there does seem to be a routine that our students like of, we have to walk down it, touch the fence at the end and come back. I don't yeah. understand that one, but it does seem to happen. That's fine. Yeah, during, um, during breaks and lunch. Yeah. Yes, it is. People a few years ago, yeah, that's it. And a few years ago, students chose, they said, we want to bring our skateboards in. So we had a little group skateboarding at the end. They had a lovely <laughs> time. No problem. Okay, um, with that. There are a couple of questions about form groups. Um, the, the number of, uh, this is one that I thought I could answer, and then I, I, I just, <laughs> number, of, uh, number of form groups and the number of people in general in a form. Five. Five. Yeah, I, couldn't, I, th five. I had four um, in my head. Five um, and if we're running full, it'll be twenty-eight in a form group. Okay, um, mm -hmm. brilliant. Um, and when do you, uh, do we know when students will end up getting their um, UTC email address? So um, yes, so we are, and that might come. That was probably going to come sooner. So we will be doing some Head Start um, things for students. So getting them thinking about starting with us thinking about their work, um, some preparation. That will be happening. Um, looking, and you and I are, are launching all of that, Simon, so we're yeah. probably looking later on next week, week after next, so mm -hmm. early early July, um, that they the students then complete and bring with them um, for their first day. In order to complete that, the students will get their UTC email address. So they will get that even before they start and information about how to join their, their Head Start Google Classroom in order to do the work. And we're looking at the Head Start work being in the sciences, English, maths, and um, engineering or business. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, couple, uh, just a couple more. Uh, there, there's a question about biology being offered as an extra option through Stowe. Uh, not at Key Stage 4. There's no options, extra options through Stowe in Key Stage 4. Um, key stage five, mm, if there is a slim possibility, but certainly not key stage four. Okay, um, and just a few questions about food. So there was one question. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in the question it was asking about how um, students pay for food. So there's a prepay account mm -hmm. um, that parents have, have a biometric. So uh, on entry, we'll do about, we'll, um, take a biometric reading which is essentially a thumbprint um, mm. and that you can uh, prepay onto that account and then students can go and use uh, that mm -hmm. at, uh, at two places there's like a little coffee shop area where you can go and buy um, drinks and some a bit of fruit and they have some really nice cakes and cookies um, and, some really and, nice paninis, and paninis and paninis we love our and, paninis they're great um, and you can go and they uh, and there's also the main um, cafeteria um, area and um, Mm -hmm. uh, and there's, but the, the question went asked: um, Can they? Can students pay in cash? They they can initially. We would I would I would encourage you to use parent pay because not only um, are the students then not bringing cash into the building, um, but you can then also see what they're eating. Um, and actually, mm -hmm. on the <coughs> system anyway, you can have access to find out their diet, um, what they are choosing to spend there their money on so I would encourage you to use parent pay and um, the cashless system yeah and, and that's where so the the, the um, coffee shop area is open uh, until the final break in the day mm. um, which is where students can go and get snacks from mm -hmm. um, a, a, again it, it doesn't necessarily offer um, for absolutely every student buying uh, or they don't cater necessarily for absolutely every single student buying um, snacks. So if it's so, if students know that they get um, hungry in the afternoon, it might be worth mm -hmm. just buying something so that they've got something kept in store. Um, yeah. But there aren't there aren't any vending machines around the building. Mm -hmm. So um, I think just being a little bit aware of how you kind of mm -hmm. uh, deal with being hungry and thirsty, then that, that might be the uh, thing that you need to do. Um, there's a question from Chantel that was about uh, monthly days. Mm -hmm. um, we did. And uh, whether they were allowed to, whether students were allowed to wear their own choice of clothing. 
So, so we don't tend to have many Mufti days. What we've started, we have our Children in Need Day, which is um, fancy dress. Um, we did have one Mufti day this year, um, last well, last year, um, and that was for raising money for a cancer charity. Um, we so we tend to do other things when it comes to raising money. Um, if it is a um, day when students are wearing their own clothes, there is normally a theme to it. Okay, yeah. when it comes. Um, that we tend to have it. So there'll be a lot of publicity about it um, if it's going to go ahead. Okay. Yeah. And they uh, tend to be, they, I was meant to say, they tend to be driven by the students themselves. So the students yeah. themselves um, saying they want to raise money for something and they've got a very good cause and actually then presenting that to Mr. Patterson ahead and saying why. Okay. Yeah. I don't so think he'll do it that often, just to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's one, the, uh, the, the last question, the final question. If anybody else has any more questions, again, please don't feel, please feel free to ask anything. Nothing's too small or silly. Um, so the, uh, the final question is, uh, do, do, do parents and students have to purchase the Solid Edge software for their child's no. laptop? No, it's free. It's free. The student version is absolutely free. The students won't be using it until, um, so in engineering, there are four units in the engineering, R105, R106, R107, and R108. The um, Solid Edge software is used with R107. So it certainly won't be used until after Christmas. And um, if you, it, it, you can't download it by Wi-Fi, it, you do have to be wired in because it's quite a package, but we also have it on dongles on sticks that we can um, load directly onto the students' machines. So no, it is free. Um, and then, sorry, just last one, just looking back through, there was a question, um, I think I've got to every, every one of them, but there was a question about whether there were students, uh, whether there was a WhatsApp group for students. Now, I don't think we're in a position to be able to facilitate that, unfortunately, right. kind of operate that, that sort of thing operates outside mm. of the remit of the school, um, I'm afraid. Um, that, that sort of, it will, uh, friendship groups tend to set those sorts of things up. Um, mm. But yeah, it's the sort of thing that we're, uh, we're not able to, to look at, I'm afraid. Um, no. But other than that, um, we I think we've got. Oh, uh, sorry, a couple more just coming in. Um, what are the? Uh, what's the difference between computer science and IT? <laughs> Great question. Right, very good question. Uh, so <laughs> IT is about using packages. It is about using existing IT. Um, being know when to use it and how to use it appropriately. Computing is coding, Python, C++. Um, in my day, it was basic, beginner's all-purpose symbolic instruction code, but um, that's a little more defunct now. So it's about coding. Um, and um, so computing is 100% exam. And to be honest, it's, it's theory and then coding. You need to be a coder, whereas IT is, uh, we use the BTEC, so there are, is some exam, but also the students um, are completing coursework, so they're using their IT skills, they're developing their IT skills, and they're completing coursework. So one is using existing packages, and one is about the skills and the coding in order to write the packages, to write programs. Perfect. Um, brilliant. I hope that answers the question. And the, the uh, final one. Um, so a few quite a few people have been saying that they've been ha that they've had um, a, a notification of acceptance onto BTEC Sport. Um, is that, do do you know if that's via email? Do people get emailed that? I would have to ask um, Miss Midgley in admissions. I yeah. couldn't tell you because it's all coordinated um, for that one via her. Brilliant. Um, okay, so that seems to be the end of the questions. Um, oh. So. Um, for, uh, um, for, for myself, thank you all very much for oh. um, for attending um, and listening and uh, and asking questions for an hour. Um, I hope <laughs> it's been really I hope it's been really useful. Um, 
it, it's certainly been great to meet everybody. Um, mm. I know we've not had a huge chance to talk, but it's been nice to see some of you at least. Oh, um, I've, as, can I say it's nice to see faces? I can see faces. It's awesome. You know, um, working at distance, I'd much rather see all your faces than um, than the distance bit that we've got. And um, I have to admit, having students in the building, oh, waving there, I'll wave back. Having students in the building, um, although the small number we can have, and there's two meters apart, it is lovely to see the faces again. They walked in this morning and I greeted them in my normal mad way and they looked at me and went, God, she hasn't changed. She's still as mad as ever. So that was that was fine. And they, they realized nothing's changed and we're still we're still here and working for them. So it's just lovely. And it's lovely. It'll be lovely to get to know everybody. Okay, yeah, um, I really will. So we have been recording um, the we have been recording the session. Um, we we are on um, Facebook and on Twitter. So I aim I aim to put this on those um, in the uh, as soon as I can. And if people if I can't get that up on there, then I'll uh, please feel free to send us an email with uh, uh, asking for it. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, there are two other sessions, so if you if there are any questions that come up, please mm -hmm. feel free to attend those sec sessions. Um, Thursday the second, so that's next Thursday, the same time, six mm -hmm. um, p.m. and uh, then Tuesday the seventh. Um, they will be combined with Year Twelve questions as well, so there might be a, the, the, some mm -hmm. of the questions will be about Year Ten, some of them will be about Year Twelve. But again, um, no question is silly or small. Please feel free to get in contact mm -hmm. with us, um, and uh, thank you all very much for attending. Oh, it's lovely to see you. All right, bye, -bye everybody. Bye. Bye now. Bye. -bye. bye. All right. Bye. Yep. bye. Oh, had a voice. Excellent. It's going down in numbers.